I would just like to open up a, a, a dialogue right here because Tim and I sat down after the meeting and um, all points well taken on the report. I'm not going to sit here and say, no, this is right. That's Rob, the state has a job to do. What I learned today and I didn't know was usually I look at Boston as a bunch of bureaucrats like the House of Representatives and they have a bad taste in their mouth right away. They don't like their government. But what I noticed today with the commissioner and the, the crew at the table, the, the Department of Education, was the compassion they have for the kids. They don't care about any politics. They don't care about anybody's feelings. They worry about what goes on in that classroom. I salute them. I've been in government off and on. I usually run when there's trouble. If they need to build a school, I was chairman of the building committee. I was chairman of the council. I came to the school committee with Jack, and we did a turnaround, and we mm -hmm. got the superintendent on, and we were heading in the right direction. And we built a new $75 million school. Hope and vision, everything was happening. Went into an accelerated program. The school committee changed. It's been a downfall since the change. Um, it's been a lot of personalities. It wasn't about those kids in that classroom anymore. It was all about who was going to win the personality conflict. And uh, obviously they won because a lot of the uh, former members weren't there. But to the point of stability, I ran with Mr. Bishop and we turned around and put an action plan together that we were going to start a search committee immediately. And we did. And we also made a lot of promises on what we thought we should see. Now, the town government that voted a no vote of confidence on the school committee was on the previous school committee, which it we does. all know. But the good thing about now is we've got a new town manager that's pro-education. We sat down with him immediately when we sat down with the, with the superintendent, and we looked and we talked with him. He's palms up. Immediately, there was like $200,000 for textbooks. And guys, what do you need? You got to let me know. You know, we don't have, uh, you know, the big bank roll, but we, we're there for you. Uh, the chairman of the council and the vice chairman. We have a relationship right now probably better than uh, you'd have to go back 10 years in order to see this town school relationship. Mm -hmm. It's one team on one stage ready to go. I get on and I go into the front office and this is why I told Tim we should go to Boston with a few people and tell our compelling story of the turn of events. And as Mr. Jovan touched, and I don't, I, I'm going to try not to repeat myself, Mr. Jovan touched on the history. Yep. And what happens is I land and they postpone the reorganization. School's opening the 26th of August. So they postpone the reorganization, they postpone it again. All of a sudden, the council has appointed some of these members here. And they appointed members understanding, you know, to move the agenda. So the whole school committee, it's like five new members or four new members, along with uh, three members that were on and they were in the minority forever on, on the committee. I land on the 14th, they appoint me the chairman, I walk in the front office and I'm looking for a Cheryl Stanton um, interim superintendent, which her contract ended on June 30th, so July 14th, she's no longer, she's back at assistant superintendent of curriculum. So I said, well, where is uh, Ms. Stanton? And, um, they said, well, she's on extended vacation that was given by the former chairman to the 26th of August. 26th of August, school's opening. I have enough knowledge to turn around and say, do we have a search? How much window dressing do we put on this? Well, I gotta be honest with you. We had a guy, Mr. Bliss, who put a resume in before I even got on to the committee and said he outreached to the district as a former employee. He had experience eight years at Dover Sherborne uh, as a, uh, a um, superintendent, the task, we had credentials. He lands and in eight weeks he rebuilds the uh, administrative cabinet. We, we had no principal at Child Street, no principal at West Street, and no finance director. And when we requested the line item budget, there was no such thing. So, what do we do? Well, we wanted stability, just like the state wanted. So what we did was, we said, let's stop moving these chess pieces around. They keep moving them around, the previous school committee, to the point where we had vacancies and weaknesses. Cheryl Stanton is the curriculum person. She was doing the visit. She concentrated on that. Steve Bliss concentrated on being the superintendent. He built the administrative team. They are all in place. We're very satisfied. He split the middle school, went back to the old reorganization plan, and Tim will complete that. And we picked up a fine administrator at the middle school. Mm -hmm. So now we're poised to move forward. The visit is going on. The worst thing in the world for this district right now is the boogeyman. 
Are they taking this over? Aren't they teachers are jumping ship? Administrators don't know whether they're coming or going. Uh, so, you know, I really think sitting down with the commissioner or the, whoever the powers sure. should be on the committee, the compassion that that Department of Ed had at the table, they were concerned about South with just kids. It's worried about salvage politics. I like that. I think that's the merit of the board. And I think we are on the same playing field as far as we want to work as a team. Right. I don't want to sit here and say, you're wrong. We have issues here. We know the last three years have been a disaster. Mm -hmm. We know curriculum's not happening, professional development. But you have members up here that know what a turnaround yeah. plan looks like. They know what the implementation of curriculum and professional development, right. especially evaluation tool. We have experience in that area where, not that we're going to do it, but yep. at least we know what it looks like when Tim turns around and says we're going to be implementing this, this, and this. Yep. At the same time that this is going on, we have a full-blown superintendent search. We have a tremendous pool of candidates right now. The last thing we need is the boogeyman to chase all these people away. And tomorrow night we have a meeting, and we're going to be sitting down, and we're going to be going through a community, um, a committee that was put together by the community. We advertised, people applied. We tried our darndest to try and get parents involved on it. Uh, we have a cross-section of business people, uh, uh, administrators from the system that, that really know what superintendent is supposed to look like. So that's why when there's a journey, I talked about a journey when we opened the school district, even the, Pat Jackman was there and Williams and, and Sally Dias, and the opening day was optimism and hope. Everybody was cranked up to move forward, and then Mr. Bliss took ill or whatever happened, and then we had to hit the button again and get the search, keep going with the search. We have a hiccup. We don't quit on the kids. So I think where we are right now is I wanted to, to, to formulate a letter with Tim and to come to Boston and to give this compelling story of you really want to take us over or do you want to partner with us? If you want to take us over, let's stop the meetings. Just take us over because you, you've got to stop the mass exodus of the qualified people. There'll be nobody here to work. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're really concerned with as a school committee. And I know that I, I, I don't have to speak for the people around me, uh, but I just have to get that history yep. out there that... I appreciate that. We had empty building. If I didn't make that move with Bliss, we would have opened this on the 26th. There would have been no finance director due to budget. There would have been no principal at two buildings. What would that have looked like at the state level? It would have looked like a disaster. So I thought providing that strong leadership you asked for, grab the bull by the horns, Let's get the job done, right. and we'll worry about the spanking later. I don't mind you spanking me. Yeah. So I think that's where we are, and I think that's where we have to move forward. Now, looking at the people at the table today, I think we have a shot at making a difference here. It's just a matter of what the flavor is at the commissioner's level and the board. Right.